have been doing it for so long, so I've seen a shift over the last 25 years, um, but I'm afraid not a big enough shift. You know, we're not really meeting a lot of the adherents, even on climate change here at, you know, at COP, let alone the fact that the fashion industry doesn't really have any adherents. You know, there's not really any kind of goals being set for my industry um, to, to, you know, get to a timeline or get to some kind of better way of working. Um, there is a, a needle being moved, but it's a little too slow, but I'm definitely a half glass full type of character. And so I'm honestly, I have belief that we can do it. Um, I do need more people to join me in a more meaningful way and not in a greenwashing way. Why don't you think they are joining you? You're such a big voice for this. Uh, you know, it's complicated. I think that, you know, I think I really believe anyone in business um, that is trying to be more sustainable or have a better um, way of coming at, at their industry for the environment, it, it comes from your heart and your soul. You have to really, really mean it and believe in it. And I think, I'm not saying that people don't believe in it, but I think that it's rare that you get a character like me that's in a position like me with a voice like mine. Um, coming at this kind of conversation in industries in general. So I think that um, enough more people need to be given guidelines, they need to be given parameters, they need to be incentivized to work like this. Certainly in fashion, I'm penalized. I get up to 30% tax put on a non-leather good when I take it into America. Um, and, it, you know, because it's a non-leather good and leather products don't have that tax. So it needs to flip.